The Stargate franchise spans three decades, three TV shows, and three movies, plus other non-canon material. Want to know where to start? We've got you covered. This is the correct order in which to watch the Stargate franchise. Any Stargate watch through should logically begin with the 1994 movie. It's the film that launched the entire franchise, and it's the first time audiences were introduced to the Stargate universe. The plot builds on the popular conspiracy that aliens built the pyramids in Giza, Egypt, and proceeds to create a mythology around the wide-ranging implications of that central concept. Played by James Spader, the main protagonist of the original movie is an archaeologist named Daniel Jackson. He's a confirmed believer in the theory that aliens built the massive ancient structures. Not surprisingly, academia at large rejects and ostracizes Daniel. But as it always tends to be with crackpot academics in movies, Jackson is more correct than he could possibly know. The US military has managed to get their hands on an alien device buried in the sands of Egypt, which is dubbed the Stargate. Eventually, Jackson teams up with Colonel Jack O'Neill, played perfectly stoically by Kurt Russell. Together, they work to uncover the secrets of the Stargate. As it turns out, this large ring-like device is basically a universal phone. You dial a set of coordinates in 3D space, and if there's a connection, you can transport yourself to another planet. Unfortunately for Jackson O'Neill and their team, this is no vacation. On this new world, they quickly become embroiled in an age-old conflict. They must defeat an evil alien dictator that calls himself Ra before they can return home to Earth. After finishing the movie, you get to enjoy a long, uninterrupted stretch of television in the form of Stargate SG-1. The series spans 10 seasons overall, but for now, we're just going to focus on the first seven. SG-1 is a spin-off from the original film, and picks up roughly one year after the events of the movie. In the pilot, the Stargate device activates on its own, and aliens walk through, killing and kidnapping several U.S. military personnel. Naturally, the government reacts by setting up a secret base called Stargate Command to monitor the device and mount a rescue mission. The base is led by General Hammond, played by the always authoritative Don Davis, who pulls Jack O'Neill, now played by Richard Dean Anderson, out of retirement. From there, O'Neill makes contact with and once again recruits Daniel Jackson, played by Michael Shanks. He completes his team with the very capable Samantha Carter, as played by Amanda Tapping, and ultimately the renegade Goa'uld warrior Teal'c, as depicted by Christopher Judge. The show quickly establishes that the Goa'uld are an aggressive, highly advanced alien civilization who are bent on destroying and enslaving humanity. To protect Earth, Stargate Command assembles a group of teams led by SG-1 to travel through the Stargate, exploring the universe and searching for allies in the battle against their new foe. Each episode has SG-1 visiting new locations, looking for partners and technology that will give them the edge over the Goa'uld. But interesting storylines develop as the show progresses. In the first seven seasons, the four-person team of SG-1 operates out of a secret base in Colorado, traveling to other planets and facing down all manner of alien threats. After wrapping up Season 7, things start to get a little more complicated. While Stargate SG-1 was still in production, MGM took advantage of its popularity and launched a spin-off TV series called Stargate Atlantis. Both of the shows took place in the same fictional universe, and their stories run in parallel to each other. The good news is that SG-1 and Atlantis are mostly independent from each other. They take place in different galaxies and have entirely different storylines and casts, but there are a few episodes where the shows reference each other in some way. You won't have to weave the episodes together, but it's probably best to start watching Stargate SG-1 Season 8 and Stargate Atlantis Season 1 at the same time. The climax of Stargate SG-1 Season 7 introduces the Lost City of Atlantis. The SG-1 team discovers its location lost in deep space. Stargate Command sends a permanent team there, which sets up a base and lives as a colony in the Lost City. Stargate SG-1 Season 8 continues the storyline, and by the season finale, the team finally defeats its two biggest opponents, the Gwauld and the Replicators. Meanwhile, Stargate Atlantis introduces several new characters, as well as the team's own powerful enemy, the Wraith. Continuing on with the trend, your next step should be to watch Stargate SG-1 Season 9, along with Stargate Atlantis Season 2. Once again, you don't need to go back and forth between the two shows, but it will help to watch them back to back since the events that occur in them take place at the same time. With many long-running series, established characters enter and leave depending on off-screen events, and Season 9 was a massive change for SG-1. Both Jack O'Neill and General Hammond transition into supporting characters who play minor roles in the series. 
They are replaced by Bo Bridges' Hank Landry, new commander of Stargate Command, and Ben Browder as Cameron Mitchell, the new leader of a fractured SG-1 team. Additionally, Vala Mal Duran, a recurring character played by Claudia Black, becomes a primary member of the SG-1 team. Mal Duran is an extremely clever, though morally dubious human alien with a deep infatuation with Daniel Jackson. Ladies first. Well then, off to you. Season 9 also introduces a new race of villains known as the Ori. These aliens discover the existence of humans living in the Milky Way galaxy and they begin a violent crusade in our region of the universe. The Ori's ultimate goal is to convert everyone to their religion, Origin. Their highly advanced technology forces SG-1 and Stargate Command to devise new and innovative ways to defeat this menacing foe. Meanwhile, on Atlantis, the team there tries to develop a retrovirus that will turn the Wraith into humans. But the experiments aren't without flaws, with test subjects producing ambiguous results at best. The Wraith, who feed on humans, discover Earth's location and decide to head there to use the population as a new feeding ground. Season 10 is the last hurrah for Stargate SG-1, and the last time you'll watch two shows at the same time. Being the last season of the series, you'll get to see several major plot lines wrapped up in SG-1. Without giving anything major away, the series finale ties up several threads, including the fate of at least one fan-favorite couple and the climax of the battle against one of the show's big bads. After dozens of episodes, the final curtain closes on Stargate SG-1, so it's time to head over to Stargate Atlantis Season 3. In Atlantis, the team manages to prevent the Wraith from assaulting Earth, but they fail in their attempts to develop a retrovirus to defeat their foe. The team on Atlantis continue to battle the Wraith even as a new foe is introduced in the form of self-replicating nanobots that call themselves the Asurans. These creatures threaten to destroy Atlantis, so the team fires up the city's hyperdrives and heads to the stars. You heard that right, the entire city is a massive spaceship. Soon after Atlantis flees, it's badly damaged and the crew find themselves adrift in space. Before moving on to the next season of Stargate Atlantis, you should take a couple of hours to watch the direct-to-video movie Stargate Arc of Truth, which picks up right after the end of Stargate SG-1. Arc of Truth wraps up some dangling threads about the Ori left at the end of SG-1 and effectively eliminates the enemy once and for all. The movie opens by explaining the existence of an ancient object known as the Ark of Truth, a mysterious machine which has the capabilities of defeating the Ori. Naturally, the team is eager to find it. Unfortunately for SG-1, it's located on the Ori's homeworld. Despite it being a suicide mission, they visit the planet and retrieve the device, but in the process resurrect an old enemy, the Replicators. The Ori gather their forces for a final assault on our galaxy, but SG-1 activates the Arc of Truth and defeats the Ori, albeit in an unexpected way. See, the device reveals to the Priors that the Ori are not gods. The Priors are humans who serve the Ori and promote their religion, which includes plans to invade Earth. The Ark of Truth causes all Priors to become aware of the true nature of the Ori, and they leave their religion and abandon the Ori altogether. The movie ends with SG-1 preparing to go through the Stargate on a new mission, implying that the story will go on. With the Ark of Truth wrapped up, head back to Stargate Atlantis and watch Season 4. There was some transition in the Stargate franchise at this point. For one, this is the first time Atlantis aired as the only Stargate show on TV. Secondly, the main cast shifted quite a bit. Elizabeth Weir, played by Tori Higginson, became incapacitated, which made room for Samantha Carter to become a main character in the series. Carter made the move from the SG-1 team and became a series regular on Atlantis. Thanks for saving our asses back there from the bad guys. It was a risky move. There's nothing compared to the risk that you and your team took. The show's tone also took a darker turn this season. Season 4 opens with Atlantis still adrift in space, and the team desperately trying to make repairs. They continue their two-front war against both the Wraiths and the Asurans, and partway through the season make the brilliant move of pitting both enemies against each other. The Atlantis team managed to reprogram the Asurans, convincing them that the Wraiths are their enemies, and by the end of the season, the Wraiths are nearly wiped out. With only one season of Stargate Atlantis remaining, it's time to take another break to watch the next standalone movie in the Stargate SG-1 storyline. Stargate Continuum occurs between seasons 4 and 5 of Atlantis, and completes the story arc of several characters from SG-1. It revolves around one of the only survivors of the Gwauld after their defeat at the hands of Stargate Command. Ball, the last of the Gwauld system lords, survives the destruction of his people. 
He continued to play a minor role in SG-1 during Seasons 9 and 10, and occasionally joined forces with Stargate Command, but ultimately remains a villainous figure. In Stargate Continuum, the SG-1 team finally corners Ball and plans to put a permanent end to him. However, it turns out that this is merely a clone of Ball, and the real System Lord has enacted one last plan to gain universal power. Ball time travels to 1939 and actually prevents the Stargate program on Earth from ever happening. Doing so creates an alternate timeline, where Ball conquers the universe. As he readies an assault on Earth, a few members of SG-1 remember the original timeline. Through their efforts, they revert history back to its original course. The movie ends how it started, with Ball about to be executed. This time, the characters are unaware of the previous events or an alternate timeline. They complete the extraction process, which brings an end to the Gwauld for good. It's time to head back to Atlantis one more time. The fifth season of Stargate Atlantis is the last. Fortunately, the show does a pretty good job of wrapping up a bunch of plot lines. McKay, the snobbish geek, finally falls in love with Keller. The team defeats their arch enemy, the Wraith. In the end, humans can finally form a government in the Pegasus Galaxy, free from the tyranny of enemy alien forces. The series finale of Stargate Atlantis is pretty spectacular. The Wraith discover the location of Earth and head straight for it, dinner being the only thing on their minds. In response, the Atlantis team decides to fly the city to Earth and join in a massive fight to fend off the Wraith. After an epic battle and glorious victory, Atlantis lands in the Pacific Ocean not far from San Francisco. The Stargate franchise continued after the end of Atlantis in the show Stargate Universe, though this latest entry in the franchise only lasted two seasons. Because it was the last of the series, you can watch both in order without having to split your attention with other shows and movies. The plot and characters are far removed from the rest of the franchise, which makes the show its own independent story arc. In Stargate Universe, humanity discovers an alien race called the Ancients. The Ancients sent a ship deep into the unexplored parts of the universe. The vessel traveled so far that it's actually almost impossible to get to it using a Stargate. And because the journey is so long, it's basically a one-way trip. The ship doesn't have enough juice to send the travelers back. A team from Stargate Command decides to take the plunge, and they wind up stuck on the Ancients' vessel. The show balances several storylines, including trying to find a way to get home, surviving this strange new place, and trying to figure out what the Ancients wanted to accomplish with the ship. It turns out the craft was investigating something incredibly close to the point in the universe where the Big Bang occurred, and there's evidence that life might have existed before the beginning of the known universe. Up to this point, we've been going in pretty much chronological order through the Stargate franchise. The last entry in the list is the exception. Stargate Origins is actually a web series that serves as a prequel of sorts to everything you've watched so far. The series is set in 1939, long before the events of the first movie. Origins is quite different from the rest of the shows. It only contains 10 episodes, and each is only 10 minutes long. After the initial release, every episode was compiled into a single movie, which is now available to stream. If you've been binging all of the shows up to this point, you should have no problem knocking Stargate Origins out quickly. The plot follows Catherine Langford, played by Ellie Gall, who is trying to unlock the secrets of the Stargate. In SG-1, Langford is a minor character and a good friend of Daniel Jackson. It's explained throughout the series that Langford was key in helping to establish the Stargate program. Now we get to see more details about her story in Stargate Origins. The main antagonist for this short series is a Nazi who, surprise surprise, knows about the Stargate and how it works. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite shows are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.